Almost all the science you can learn in a biology textbook, or anywhere else for that matter, was generated using the scientific method. Most science behind modern medicine was also developed this way, so it's important to understand what the scientific method is, what are its limitations, and how it can lead to useful knowledge about the world. Biologists today can be seen doing many different things, yet they are all practicing some form of scientific research or scientific activity on living things. Some of these activities can seem very different. This can include analysis of specimens or experiments on samples in a laboratory setting with the familiar white lab coat, or observing organisms and collecting samples from a field or from the environment. This could even include, nowadays, reviewing and comparing data and sequence information on a computer. All of these biologists, however, are likely engaged in one of two different types of activities. They may simply be making observations and descriptions of living things, their appearance and their structure. This is important work and helps make scientific ideas and concepts easier to organize and to communicate. More importantly, though, biologists also gain knowledge about how these living things and structures function. This knowledge can be useful and is gained through the scientific method and through experimentation. This method is fairly straightforward, involving a few simple steps. The first part of the method is to combine observations with pre-existing knowledge to generate a testable prediction or a hypothesis. Basically, the hypothesis is an educated guess, meaning that there is a rationale or reasoning behind your prediction. It is based off of something that you already accept to be true. This hypothesis can be tested to determine if it is correct or incorrect. Does it correctly predict how the living system functions? This is done through carefully planned experiments. Results of an experiment are observed and noted. If they match the predicted value, the hypothesis is supported, although not absolutely proven. Scientists cannot prove that their understanding of how something functions is absolutely correct. The most they can do is to continue to make predictions and do experiments that test their understanding and ideas about living things. If the results from the experiment do not match the prediction, then scientists will re-examine either how the experiment was carried out, or if the hypothesis was a good prediction of the pre-existing theory, or a good test of pre-existing theories, or even if the pre-existing notions, ideas, and concepts need to be re-examined or overturned. How the experiments are set up is often a point of constant discussion between scientists. The best experiments give a clear answer regarding the hypothesis and usually tries to give the best chance to disprove rather than support the hypothesis. Note here that it is not necessarily important that the hypothesis is proven rather than disproven, or supported rather than refuted, but rather that a unambiguous answer is given. It is important to make the prediction or the hypothesis before performing an experiment or collecting any data. Scientists are ideally interested in understanding how something functions so that this knowledge can be put to use in a technology or medicine, in solving some real-world problem. Skewing the results to fit a favored but flawed theory does not aid in this goal and should be avoided by biologists. <laughs>